Vampire Diaries Season 8, Episode 4, An Eternity of Misery. This episode I thought was really fun. I really enjoyed the last one, and I think this was a good episode to kind of pair with it. You know, we have Sybil being like the crazy awesome villain in the last episode, and then this, we actually get Sybil as the innocent character before she was kind of morphed into the villain that we know now by her sister, who is this other siren. And I think one of my favorite things about this episode is that this big mysterious plan uh, from the last episode didn't have anything to do with Sybil's sister in any way, shape, or form. Whatever that little, like, metallic ball is that Damon found at the end, that has nothing to do with her sister. Like, that's just, that's just a thing. That's whatever Sybil was planning. She got into, you know, Damon's subconscious, which... I thought it was cool, because I mentioned in the last my last review, I was like, I don't understand what the heck Bonnie is doing taking Enzo to the cabin. I didn't think that was a good idea at all, because I'm like, clearly they made a point to show if, you know, Damon was able to just keep going. He's like, hey, I got to get out of here and keep doing the mission. It didn't make a lot of sense to me what was going on uh, with Enzo, but they kind of explained it in this, where the reason that he um, is able to, you know, he was kind of able to break free is because he still had something to hold on to. Like, he flipped his humanity switch, but it wasn't done in the way that it was for Damon, where Sybil, you know, had to jump into his mind. And it was like, he gave up, mostly, like, right in the beginning, but there were still a couple of things that kept him from going, like, all out 100%. And so, when she, you know, of course, when she found that out, she took, like, the only couple of things that he had. So now it's, like, in his subconscious, he wants to help her because she basically stole all those memories from him so technically they're both free but that's why Damon is still doing that mission so I was like okay I like that explanation it makes a lot of sense now and it kind of lets me know that for sure Enzo is a hundred percent you know done with being controlled they just have to help him get his humanity back and then everyone can work together to try to save Damon and I maybe a lark and maybe everybody I don't know how this is going to play out now but I love the way that it started, and, you know, we get the reveal that Sybil's uh, sister, this entire time, has actually been a large nanny, and that was pretty nuts to me. I didn't see that coming. Of course, the way they played it, it was like, okay, well, we have this, uh, we have, you know, the intern, and she appears to be, you know, the siren, and it brought up some questions when that happened. I was like, okay, that's a really cool reveal, but... What, you know, what was she going towards? Like, if she knew that that was her sister, or maybe she didn't. You know, that was one of those things where I was kind of thinking, like, maybe she didn't know that that's what it was. She's just trying to get more information on what's really happening. And, you know, of course, if she has a lead on an actual siren, then maybe, you know, it, it would actually be fine. And it, it led me to another um, crazy little scene. It was with the tuning fork. When the tuning fork dropped... Uh, with the girls, it messed with the girls. I would assume that that's because they're they're magic based, and that's why it, it has it might have an effect on anyone who's magical, or maybe specifically um, witches and psychics. I guess because obviously it has no effect on the vampire. So, I don't, for whatever reason, it affected the girls. It could just be because they're young and have magical ability. So just anything magical kind of resonates with them. Just like an actual child, when you're younger, things just have a greater impact on you, both mentally and physically. So maybe that's a part of why that happened. But um, the nanny was also in that scene. She, of course, you know, came down a little bit later, and she's like, you know, what happened and stuff. So it was interesting. It's like, man, she's been there this whole time. All this other crazy stuff happened. She was also technically killed, which I thought was really interesting. And I don't know if she could be, uh, and this could, this might actually come into play, but they had the whole thing where she, like, died and this and that, and it's like, okay, well, something happened there. Like, obviously, you know, she was brought back or, you know, brought back faster, I guess, uh, by Caroline, but can they actually be compelled is the question, because I, w I would assume so, based on everything that happened, but at the same time, I feel like that's why she was able to kind of... That's why she was making all these uh, connections. Because maybe she wasn't actually compelled when Caroline was like, hey, you should forget, and this and that. Because when the intern came in, I, of course, don't remember her name, there was nothing to suggest anything about sirens or anything like that. And, of course, Sybil had no idea what the heck the tuning fork was. I would assume that her sister didn't either. 
So, it seemed like when the whole thing happened with the intern, either, maybe they also did a scene where she just was like, what, tell me everything that's happening. And she was like, oh, there's a siren. That has to be my sister. So maybe that's what happened as well. But I think it would be kind of cool if she was like, you know, I knew you guys had something going on because, you know, when I got killed, Caroline tried to, you know, compel me, but that doesn't work on me or something. I just acted like it did. So that would be kind of cool if that were the case. And she was like, I knew something was happening. And then I was like, unfortunately... Once I found out, you know, that you guys were trying to kill my sister off, well, I had to snap and, you know, start killing all you guys. So it would be cool if they kind of play that around, but, you know, maybe that won't even come up if they truly can be compelled, which would also be very interesting. If they aren't utilizing their abilities and someone, you know, one of the vampires gets the jump on them, they can be compelled to do whatever the vampire wants. But, of course, that's a little bit more difficult. They'd have to stop them uh, from speaking. So it's a little bit more difficult, but... I just thought that was cool. Like, it just adds a whole new layer to what they're going to do now. They have these girls together. But they also don't have them together because Sybil doesn't want the help of her sister because she still kind of hates her. She's mad at her for the backstory that we get in this episode where uh, she's the young girl. And it's kind of funny because that was supposed to be the twist is that she was the young girl. But when she first started telling the story, I was like, okay, so this is how she learned to be a siren. I instantly assumed that she was the young girl. Um, the only thing that made me switch was actually the part when she was like, I underestimated, um, my sister, and then it was, um, it was the intern when she stabbed, uh, Stefan, and I was like, oh, okay, so she was actually the older sister the whole time. That was the only part that, um, you know, that actually made me think that she was the older sister, because they just have the actresses, and obviously everybody's always just, like, mid-twenties or whatever, except for maybe Alari, he might actually be in his thirties, and I think, um... Ian Summerholden, I believe, who's, uh, Damon, I believe he's in his 30s as well, but that was, like, the only time when I thought that she was even remotely, possibly, the older sister. I just always assumed that she was the younger one, and she was just telling her story of how she was, you know, changed, which I guess she was. I was right, but I like the way they did that. You know, they go through this process, and, you know, Stefan is getting this story and he has to figure out who he is. You know, which sister is he? Is he the good sister who was turned bad? Or was he, you know, the bad sister from the beginning that turned, you know, the good sister bad? So it was cool. And he's like, you know, by the end he decides I'm both because he kind of is. You know, he's had his crappy moments. He is the one that turned, you know, Damon into a vampire and stuff like that. So I just like the way they went through it. They go through uh, the story of this guy, Cade, and we find out that basically he's like the first psychic on the planet, and because these people kind of burned him at the stake, sort of, he basically let out a psychic blast that pretty much created hell, which I thought was very interesting, and, you know, we get to see, you know, what this hell is, and we actually find out Cade and I thought this was actually pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie, it was very simple, but I was like, holy crap, it, they made a connection to, like, the whole other side thing, where people were dying, um, when they were magic-based, and they would just get, like, sucked up into the sky, and it was like, holy crap, that was, there's an actual explanation for that, because it didn't seem to make a lot of sense, like, why would they spawn there, in general, if they weren't meant to die, but now that the other side is officially back, which we actually get to see with the intern, which kind of sucked, because when that happened, I was like, oh, she wasn't, she didn't actually go to hell. She just turned into a ghost. And I was like, okay, maybe they're going to do something with that because she had, you know, kind of this whole experience with the tattoo and already going there temporarily. Maybe something was going to come of this. But then it was like, nope, she got dragged away like other people did in uh, previous seasons. And she just flew into the sky. And I was like, huh, that was a great callback to, you know, that connection where we'd see people just being ripped from wherever they died at and they would just vanish up into the sky. And I was like, that's really sweet. I just love the way they did that. And it, it gave an actual connection to this invisible force as to why these people were just like flying off, you know, into nothingness. And maybe it's because he's, you know, considering the way they do it, it's like you're still technically on Earth. It's almost like you're, you know, they say it's hell, but it's more like that's purgatory. And then you kind of get sucked up into the air. And I guess that's where you get teleported to actual hell. But maybe he's in this purgatory plane and they have to meet him before he sends them directly to hell. So maybe, we'll, I'm assuming, I mean, they gave the guy a name and they talk all about how uh, Sybil now has orders. We find out that this big mission is actually Cade's mission. I would just, as usual, if there's any 
if there's a higher power than the villain we have, and that villain is supposed, to, you know, that higher power is supposed to have died forever ago, I always assume that the big plan is to resurrect them. So I think that's what's going to happen. Um, I don't know how it's going to play out though. We have Sybil versus her sister, where she's like, "I don't want to deal with you." Who knows what's going on? Um, and I wish I could remember her name, but I never thought that the character mattered. I just thought she was the babysitter, so I never bothered to learn her name. But, you know, it, it seems like Sybil's kind of following this mission, and her sister kind of gave up. It was like, oh man, you know, we stopped being partners or whatever, and that was it. My sister went her way, I went my way, and Sybil ended up being the one that got captured, and her sister just went on living her life, like, oh well. And that's it. That's all there is to it. So I'm not sure if, you know, both the Sirens are working for Cade right now or if it's just Sybil and then there's going to be a bit of a rivalry. But it, it's hard to tell because I would think, um, you know, well, we hadn't really seen the babysitter like eat anybody. So I would assume that she was at some point because they have to in order to, you know, stay young. And it's been hundreds of years, it's, you know, especially considering the story, her knowing that they were all people and stuff like that. So, of course, she didn't really care even when they were human. So, it, it was interesting. I was like, okay, how is this supposed to play out when Sybil doesn't want to work with her sister, but she's making this plan to bring back Kay? Like, is her sister going to get on board? Are they going to end up arguing because her sister doesn't want Kay to come back? Because she kind of took off. She never... I would assume she never tried to rescue her sister. Maybe she did, maybe she didn't, but... It's just a lot of possibilities. Like, how is the relationship going to play out now? Even though, of course, her first move was, well, you guys found my sister. I can finally rescue her. But Sybil doesn't want to be a part of that. So we have to see where it goes. But I'm actually super excited for it. Um, Damon, you know, going on this mission actually led us to uh, see Matt again in this episode. And I was curious when he would show up because he's always got his thing. So Matt shows up. We actually find out who his father is. Um... He, you know, kind of explains everything to his father. And so they go, I, I guess, to Mystic Falls. It seemed like they went to Mystic Falls to me. And sadly, uh, he finds that Tyler is officially dead. Because they, they did, like, really, that was a messed up tease. Because I thought for sure he was dead. And then Damon gives him all the specifics. Like, oh, I left him bleeding and stuff. He's not actually dead. And then he gets to the car at the end of the episode. And he is dead. And I was like, that was a messed up tease. That, that was mean of them to kind of do that. Um, with such a definitive ending and then kind of messing around with it like oh he's not actually dead and then we see the end of the episode he is dead so that was kind of a messed up it was definitely a messed up episode for Matt so he, I know he's going to be pissed off seemingly like I said he's in Mystic Falls because he was driving and then they went to a random place and everything is always close to Mystic Falls it's always close enough which clearly it's super close because Alaric we find in this episode who once again Favorite character. Uh, him and Bonnie go through the harshest stuff, though. And he has to freaking stab... He has to pierce his own eardrums with a knife so that he can find this secret passage and um, escape. And he finds himself coming out of this uh, sewer grate. And boom, there's the clock tower because somehow he's in Mystic Falls, which I thought this armory was, like, miles and miles away. I thought they were in, like, a totally different city like a really far city because i'm not even sure if that college was in the same state like i i never really remember i know it's always close enough so i just assume everything's in the same state but somehow he went from the armory of course back to mystic falls it, it, it has to end it at mystic falls but he comes out of his grade and he's looking around and i'm like of course he ends up here so there's some connection once again to the armory as well as uh the sirens if or maybe something extra because even though they trapped the siren in there, I'm pretty sure that's not what the room was made for because how they introduced it in this season where they found the extra room with the book and stuff like that. There's like extra stuff in there so it wasn't just made for the sirens. So maybe there's some other weapon that they can use against the sirens or maybe something specifically for Cade if this was built for sirens and stuff like that. Maybe just psychics in general. So... It's hard to say. Um, I don't know where it's going. I would assume that Matt, if he really is in Mystic Falls with his dad, they're going to end up running into Alaric. And Alaric does have to get to somebody so they, his eardrums can be healed. So hopefully they do that in the next episode because he's just going around. I mean, that was just crazy. I was like, man, he has to 
um, seriously pierce his own eardrums. Like, I honestly, I just would have been like, I'm going to have to try putting my hands over my ears first because I can't risk it. Or I'd be too freaked out to do it. But he had to get out and, to, you know, try to help do something. If things are just going nuts. He's trapped. So I'm excited to see where they take it. This is definitely a fun episode and just really crazy, crazy reveals. We find out that the siren isn't somebody random or the, you know, Sybil sister isn't someone random. And it was like the least suspecting person. To me, at least, I'm sure some people had that prediction like, oh, you know, maybe it's, it'll end up being the nanny or something like that. But I just didn't think that at all. You know, she was just the nanny. She'd been there before. You know, she was in the last season. So it was like, that's just her character. She's already been there. No big deal. But I like the way they did that. I thought that was a great reveal for a character that had, um, at one point, a, minor, a very minor role is just the nanny. But that was a great way to do it. I thought that was really cool. I thought, honestly, that this would just be a brand new villain. I thought they would just have... You know, she would just have a sister, and it would just be a, a, a new siren. I honestly thought that was it, because it's not like we're that far into the season. I wouldn't be that surprised if they just brought in a brand new actress uh, to be, you know, uh, one of the new villains, because, you know, they're the villains, so I just assumed both actresses would be brand new people. And so it was cool that it was actually a character we've already seen for a while, and definitely not the one I would have expected, you know, going from... Uh, the stuff with the intern. You know, I, I didn't really think it was her either because of her story and how she explained everything. I didn't think it was her. And I never would have expected the nanny. So that, that was another thing. I was like, well, I don't think it's either of them because of the stories that we know or I guess lack thereof for the nanny because she's just the nanny. But I like the way it played out. I thought it was a really good twist. I didn't see it coming, but I thought it was fun. And I'm excited to see where this goes with them you know, bringing back Cade, whatever this ball is supposed to do that Damon has now, um, everyone getting the info that Damon killed Tyler, I'm very curious how that's going to shake things up too, because that's going to affect uh, Caroline and Bonnie more than anyone else. Like, of course, you know, Stefan has his relationship, or had his relationship with Tyler, but it was like, you know, of like the characters we have left, Three of them were like super tied, you know, to Tyler because it was like, you know, we had like our four people and it was like Tyler, or I guess our five people, which was, you know, of course, Elena, Bonnie and Caroline and then Matt and Tyler. They were like their friends that grew up through school. So one of them, you know, or I guess, I guess technically one of them being killed off since Elena isn't dead, but one of them being killed off, you know, that's going to have a huge effect. And I'm curious how that's going to change how much Bonnie really wants to help and also how much Caroline wants to help considering they're each with someone who cares about Damon and Bonnie of course has that extra attachment of how she cares about Damon as well and I don't know Caroline I think is just neutral on Damon it's hard to say if she really likes him likes him but I think she might be the one affected the most um in a drastic way because I think Bonnie would be like well crap I'm you know I already have my huge moment Caroline and Damon never really had that so I think Caroline might be the one to kind of really go all out and want to take him down. As well as Matt, of course, because he... I don't know what the heck they're going to do with him. He might finally just get a kill. I, I, would, I would love it, honestly, if for whatever reason, Matt was the one to kill both sirens. I'd be like, you know what? This whole series, he deserves that. He deserves, like, two just the final series kills. If they gave him to Matt, I'd be like, that. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All the times he's been thrown around, killed off, or, you know, killed with the ring on, almost killed without the ring, killed without the ring, all all the different things that have happened to him. I wouldn't hate it if he just killed both of the sirens. It's like, yep, I saved everybody, end of the series, we're done, and Matt's the hero. That wouldn't, that would be hilarious, but at the same time, he would definitely deserve it. So, however it's going to play out, I'm excited for it, but I definitely want to know what you guys thought about this episode, so please comment below, let me know your favorite parts, least favorite parts, and now that we know, well, I guess technically we don't know, but I'm assuming um, Sybil's plan is to resurrect Cade. But now that we have Cade as a character, we have, um, I'm just going to say Sybil's sister revealed as the siren. I want to know how you guys think that's going to change things up. Like, what's going to happen with these characters? Um, what is their relationship going to be You know, with the sirens? Are they going to bond together? Or is Sybil just going to fight off her sister while trying to complete this plan? And is Sybil, you know, going to have to end up finding her sister because her sister doesn't want Kate to come back since she kind of just, you know, 
decided to just live a normal human life after a while. So I want to know your predictions on that. And I also want to know if you guys think uh, the intern is done permanently. Because I thought that was kind of a sad way. If she's like permanently gone and we don't see anything extra from her, like she just gets sucked away and that's it, that would suck because it was like, considering how they were kind of doing a character, if she just died, I'd be like, man, that blows for her. And I would, personally, I wanted to see more. But considering she died already, I feel like it's an easy opportunity for them to show us Cade in this sort of purgatory slash hell dimension because he probably has something to say to her like, oh, I lost you, like I almost had you a few years ago, but I didn't get you that time, but now I have you. So I want to know if you guys think she's dead permanently or if she'll come back. And if she is dead permanently, do you think we'll get an extra scene with her? Or was that truly it, like the ending of the episode? That's the last time we'll get to see her. So want to know your predictions on that and what you thought about the episode in general. So please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching. Whoops.